Okay, so we continue our school on modular spaces, combinatorics, and integrable systems. And uh, our next speaker today is Vladimir Fogg. Please, Volodya, I apologize for the delay with your lecture. Your mic is muted. You don't, I don't hear you. If now it's okay? Now it's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, well, uh, I'll continue uh, today just from different points of view of the same story. So I just recall that we had one approach to the integrable system of the uh, Poncelli type. And it was uh, the phase space was uh, the pair of curves planar curves about well, curve and uh, G points on it, which is the same thing as the line bundle. The second approach was that we consider the phase space as a collection of flags. Of flags in infinite dimensional space. Uh, in, in some infinite dimensional space H uh, uh, and subject to a symmetry, subject to that two symmetry. And there is a version which is collection of, of flags of frame flex. Uh, and H, well, H star, uh, I didn't explain why it's just your space, but it's also subject to uh, as to symmetry. Uh, and uh, just, I uh, maybe uh, summarize what, what, what uh, last time that uh, on this space there is a, some very natural coordinate system, namely if you have uh, so you have frame flags which you can imagine uh, the frame flags f alpha i these are frame flags tilde. So uh, recall that at every uh, we have a distinguished vector. E alpha i uh, belonging to the quotient of f i alpha quotiented by f i minus one alpha, and there is a uh, there are some uh, natural uh, natural uh, uh, coordinates which are just wedge products of of this vector. So you take e i. Uh, you take the coordinates a coordinates. Well, func functions. So far, they are not coordinates. So, uh, functions, natural functions, functions, uh, which are a uh, d, which is equal to a d is a divisor uh, located at infinity. So, it's kind of uh, something like uh, i one, etc. I s collection of uh, integers, uh, S is a number of points at infinity and uh, the, uh, the AS, et cetera. So it's a wedge product over S over, uh, over I don't know, J equals one up to S. And uh, for every J uh, wedge product of I uh, equals uh, I, uh, maybe I, J, maybe K equals ij to uh, infinity uh, e uh, ej uh, maybe i will do alpha alpha equals one to, to s e alpha uh, 
So you just take the wet product, the uh, and uh, well the con the condition which I wrote in the uh, intersections of, of these alphas or the dark sum that, that for if the sum of indices is equal to zero, then the direct sum of the H is decomposes into a direct sum of Fs. So it ensures that this infinite product is well defined as a number. So it belongs to uh, the uh, top power. Uh, of H, and uh, just like uh, it was done in the uh, talk by, by Dima, that this top power is well, well one can't define this top external power. So these are essentially some infinite dimensional determinants. But well, they are, though every determinant is not well defined, the ratios are well defined. So there is a functions, and uh, all these. Uh, uh, well, there are plenty of functions as functions are enumerated by divisors. So the action of the discrete uh, discrete uh, evolution, discrete dynamical systems, is very easy in this function. So if you take, uh, it's just shift of divisor. So it takes AD, uh, AD, Send S D to A D plus uh, some some other D plus X. So it's just just shifts of code, shifts of uh, of this function. So the set of functions remains uh, unchanged under under the uh, the uh, this transformation. The only uh, problem is that this set is um, uh, well, of course they are all dependent because. You were speaking about finite dimensional space, and here we have infinitely many functions on it. Uh, and of course, out of this function, one can choose a coordinates and choice of coordinates, choice of independent functions, independent set, is given by uh, the uh, the bipartite graph. So the uh, the bipartite graph just allows us to choose the finite set of divisors such that uh, the, uh, the, the the corresponding function are independent, and there are divisors correspond to faces of my bipartite graph. So uh, while well, I'll come back to this picture a little bit later, but so far I'll uh, uh, now I'll uh, pass to the third point of view. And the fourth point of view, just to explain that what we're doing something which is also known from from very old time, not not from 18th century, but a little bit later. But nevertheless, it's uh, just uh, actually the same thing as uh, well the the these phase spaces is just not only curved collection of facts, but also uh, it's just symplectic leaves or Poisson sub manifolds. Better to say Poisson sub manifolds. Submanifolds, and not any so but on sublinear, but na namely double pure cells, of Poisson Lie groups, of Poisson, and in this particular context, it's Lie group. And in my context, it will be only SLS for different well, for different ends. So, uh, what is uh, the uh, integrable systems on Brouillard cells? So, uh, I just recall that uh, well, I will call this group G. If we have the group, uh, uh, sorry, and of course I need to put hat, but that is uh, 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 an affine group. So I, uh, what uh, are the, uh, the, the well, I recall that on a, on a, I have any group G and uh, suppose that R is a classical R matrix. 
R matrix, which is, uh, this is uh, the uh, element tensor product, R is in the uh, tensor product of G times J. And uh, they uh, it de define the Poisson bracket on G, and the Poisson bracket is given by the formula that the Poisson bracket of G and G, well, usually it's written like that, is equal to R times one tens uh, G tensor of G, G tensor G minus G tensor G times R. So uh, other way, uh, if you have uh, the two functions F and, and uh, F1 and F2, then the Poisson bracket of two functions is given by the formula. You take two functions, you have just one function uh, uh, F, you take uh, F uh, of, uh, uh, you apply to, to the function F, the Poisson, uh, the uh, left uh, RL, R, you derive, uh, the, 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 the functions f times g, oh, g, uh, you derive it from the left and minus, you derive it from the right, you derive it from the right. It's just the right derivative and this is left derivative and this is a difference uh, uh, and uh, then you multiply the result, of course. So you take the multiplication well, and uh, if, in fact, uh, the uh, the property is that uh, it's well the, the consequence that uh, you have automatically get plenty of commuting functions, namely uh, if uh, f one and f two are class functions. So it means that the added variant. Uh, as variant means that uh, if you, I, you derive the function from the left by the, the elements of the Lie algebra, you derive from the left to the right, the result is the same. So therefore, the, this term and this term cancel, uh, and therefore, the, the, then the F1 and F2 commute. So therefore, for any group, we have uh, uh, some number of uh, commuting Hamiltonians. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, they do not always give uh, a coordinate system, uh, an integrable system, because there are relatively few of them. So, for example, for five dimensional group, you have ra rank uh, different algebraically dependent added variant function, and dimension, well, the dimension, of course, of the, uh, the group is much larger. Dimension of the symbolic degree usually is larger, so it's not, uh, uh, not an integrable system. However, for uh, it's kind of changes situation changes for fine groups where we, you have plenty of um, uh, well every, all dimensions are infinite so it means that the symplectic leaves are finite dimensional but uh, the number of uh, commuting functions is uh, is infinite uh, number of added variant functions is infinite and therefore we have plenty of uh, integrable systems which appear in many symplectic leaves. And uh, the classification of these integrable systems is well known, is just given by, by uh, more or less by uh, uh, the classification of Brussels and the claim, and uh, that every, uh, so every group G, uh, it can be fine though, or fine, is actually a, a, a disjoint union of uh, the, the something over U in uh, the, the vile group, W times W dot bar. So W is a wild group. So it's decomposes into, into Poisson submanifolds, which are enumerated by the elements of this double uh, fine group, double wild group. And uh, these uh, elements are actually submanifolds. So it's a sub Poisson submanifold. So this is a union and GU. G U R Poisson submanifolds, submanifolds, of dimension L of U plus R of G. This is the rank. L is the length of 
this element uh, as an element of file while group. So while it's still still Hopster group, while times while bar is still Hopster group. So you just count the length of this element as a Hopster group. So you have this this union, and uh, uh, the this uh, well, for technical reason, it's much more, con more convenient. Uh, to consider instead of uh, this uh, this decomposition, uh, we, we consider we divide everything by the conjugation. So, g you you take the g quotiented by the uh, uh, the conjugation by the Cartan sub algebra, uh, and of course the result is also well these elements are invariant, double uh, self invariant on the conjugation of the Cartan sub algebra. So it's also the union of uh, of g g u quotiented by a at h and u is in uh, w cross w bar uh, now another claim which is also uh, universal that uh, well that the uh, g u is carries an integral system F and on F, the corresponding element U is the shortest in its conjugacy class. So uh, for uh, for uh, uh, Find the dimensional groups. Uh, for for simple fine dimensional groups, it means uh, it means that uh, U is divides or it at most so divides uh, the Coxter C uh, C times C bar where C is a Coxter element. So well, it's easy exercise, but you can verify that uh, if you, the element is longer than the clock star, then uh, the you can simply it's the same conjugacy class. You have you have a shorter element, but uh, so there are relatively few uh, numbers, a few uh, elements which give integrable systems. For, however, for for uh, 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 the uh, for GU is uh, for U for affine groups. There are much more uh, elements which are minimal in their conjugacy class, and we'll classify them. And uh, now uh, I want to, uh, in order to sh give the correspondence between uh, the the uh, well another claim which now this is a claim this is that just i write this as a kind of proposition because i'm going to to illustrate it or even prove proposition they have this element uh this minimal shortest element shortest element uh of n w for uh, S L and hat are actually correspond to uh, convex Newton polygons. Uh, just a uh, simple remark: uh, uh, What are the uh, what are the uh, the uh, Hamiltonians in a fine case? So Hamiltonians. So if you have uh, L G, the, the S L and hat is just elements of the S L and hat that are uh, some matrices of the German uh, one, of course, uh, which depends on lambda. So they are, they are in, uh, well, the matrices N, N times N with coefficients in uh, C of the lambda inverse. 
So we have uh, some polynomial matrices, which are, uh, and uh, well, and the, the, the one can define the, uh, the, well, if you have a determinant, the characteristic polynomial determinant of A lambda, uh, A, A uh, lambda mu, A lambda minus mu, sorry. Uh, well, this is a function which is uh, which is some polynomial of lambda lambda inverse and mu. And uh, the well, in in principle, for every matrix, you can associate uh, the uh, the polynomial in lambda lambda bar mu, and therefore you can associate a a, a Newton polygon. So you, for, for, it's one way to, to do that in so Newton polygon. Uh, well, uh, but this is kind of you you a priori looking at the matrix, you cannot say uh, what Newton polygon is corresponds to. Uh, well, you just may define the. The, this uh, the cells by by this condition of course it's so, however it's not very very easy to to determine this matrix i want to to uh, give another construction which is uh, how to get a Lisbon polygon out of uh, just out of the element of the the element of the white group. ah sorry i forgot to mention that uh, uh, so the coefficients of uh, the remark coefficients of P uh, are, are commuting hamiltonians. Are the commuting hamiltonians? So my integrable systems is just generated by integrable system in continuous sense of this word. Uh, on the other hand, uh, also, I want maybe to, to remark that uh, uh, the uh, discrete, another remark, that uh, the, uh, if we have uh, G, there is a natural, natural discrete, discrete evolution, the dynamical system on uh, G quotiented by H defined by by the transformation, which you take element G on my group, which you can decompose it into the element, which is upper triangular times lower triangular, and then sent it to the same in the other sense. So this is a map from G. So this is a map which sends uh, G over at H to G over at H. I remarked that uh, it doesn't matter really uh, which, uh, how, where you put the diagonal. So the upper triangular part or the lower triangular part because Independent of that, the class in the conjugation class uh, remains unchanged. So this is why this transformation is really well defined, not on the group itself, but on this quotient. It's one of the reasons why I take the quotient of this story. So the, uh, this is a, a transformation. Of course, it preserves uh, conjugacy classes, and therefore it preserves, uh, for example, if we apply it to a fine group, uh, if you, we understand, well, of course, we need to to figure out what is positive and negative part. But nevertheless, uh, if you were to use it for uh, a fine group, that the same uh, thing, well, it preserves this polynomial. And so this is a, a, a discrete system preserving this, this uh, the Hamilton. Uh, so uh, now I want to so say the following, so this, what is the relation between, uh, so uh, construction, We take an element u, u 
n w times w for a fine group and we get a so for a fine group s l n hat and we get out of that uh, a, a convex polygon Uh, the idea is the following. So, uh, first of all, we need to understand what is a fine group by SLN. So, another uh, another remark. Uh, the uh, W what what is a W for SLN for SLN without hat? Uh, is uh, I imagine it's my favorite uh, way to to imagine the elements of the uh, this group is the following. So we have SLN. It's my particular case. It will be SL three, and I draw is as the wiring that well, as, as a braid diagram, but well, kind of braid. So for example, this is uh, the element of the group. So it's just. So of course it's nothing but the permutation, but they just draw it as a diagram which connects the points at the beginning and points to the end. So it's an element of SLS. Uh, this uh, representation by, of course, is up to homotopy. What is important that this diagram allows me to write down the uh, the uh, element of SW as a product of generators. In this particular case, it will be the generators, which is S, S, uh, S2, S1, S2. The intersections correspond to generators of my, my group. So this is a way how to imagine the, uh, the elements of the permutation. So uh, the same thing, uh, W, I want to take the quotients of W uh, up to conjugation. Uh, for SLN, of course, and the these classes can be represented in the following way. So this the only difference between these two, these diagrams, and if I do it for for conjugation. So the I am I just. Uh, draw everything on a cylinder, so gluing left and the right side. So I have, uh, maybe I should have drawn it for the other color, but well, I, I have to, well, this is a, this piece of the picture. I have three points here, three points here, and I draw the elements, the diagram. And of course, I just, Uh, make this diagram on a cylinder. So I just take uh, the, well, connect the points on the left to, to the corresponding points on the right. So you have a collection, you can forget about these vertical lines for a moment. And therefore you have a collection of, of, uh, of uh, curves uh, and uh, the, uh, the element is the minimal, it's a conjugation class. Uh, if the number of intersection points between the, the, the curves is minimal possible. So you cannot make it smaller by moving the curves. For example, this is not minimal in this GPS class because you can uh, take the, the middle curve and pull it down. And in this case, uh, the number of intersection points will be one and here is three. So this is not a, uh, 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 so opt up to how much. So, uh, in fact, the the uh, well, uh, the yeah, the, the elements you can also figure out what are the elements minimal in the uh, in this conjugacy class. Uh, so uh, now the third uh, the third thing, what is W hat? The uh, element W hat. So uh, that or that is the same thing, W hat equals W for SLN hat. 
the same the same story you present it as a, as a diagram but the difference is that now you you take it on the cylinder but cylinder in the other direction so you draw a cylinder you have points on the right points on the left and so you have uh, you uh, uh, can have uh, well the example of, of this element of this group is something like that for example you see here uh, maybe it's well it's a little bit too simple as an element but nevertheless so you have just one association point in this particular picture and the uh, the um, uh, uh, here it corresponds to one generator which I call a zero where top and the bottom intersect behind but of course for example if you take you, you may have something more complicated here uh, for example if you take this this one it will be a zero s one s two S1. S1, S2, S1. So this is an element of the, uh, the well, this is a representation of the, the affine while group. So this is really a fine while group is a kind of periodic. If you take the universal cover of the cylinder, it's will the same as this diagram, this diagram, but periodic. And so uh, W hat is some kind of periodic version of, uh, of uh, finite dimensional uh, and so the uh, conjugacy class W hat up to conjugation uh, for also for for SLN SLN hat uh, uh, is the following. So this is uh, uh, you have a torus. And you, uh, well, you have the same same picture as you had before. And you glue it to itself. So you have for example, you have something like that. I just reproduce the same picture. And uh, uh, well, and I, I just joined it behind. So I have a collection of curves on the torus. And uh, well, this is almost what I want to, well, one, one thing which is uh, really important to, to um, impose here that, uh, well, W hat, uh, in this, uh, this case, I want really to uh, consider the, uh, maybe, maybe I should drop this. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe I, I want to uh, to say the, the the following idea that uh, uh, there is another well uh, w uh, w simply is just generated by the center generators s one s uh, s one is generated by so it's generated by s one s n and n minus one. Uh, it's I just interchanges I and I suppose first uh, element. Here is generated by by uh, the element S0, etc. S n. 
minus one because uh, here you, well, S zero is something which I drew here, but also there is another generator actually, which is uh, just uh, and, and some element lambda and the element lambda, uh, it has some, nothing to do with uh, operator lambda, which is a lot of time, but it's just, and lambda corresponds to uh, the diagram, uh, which is just the shift by one. So this is something like that. So this is, so this diagram. So you see that uh, lambda is a generator which doesn't uh, ha doesn't have any any self intersection. However, it corresponds to some non-trivial permutation. So this is a, a generator which is uh, some additional. Uh... Uh, now I'll define the uh, the group. Well. W. Uh, well, let's take U belonging to W times W hat, W hat times W hat bar. One, I wrote right bar, just, uh, it's actually it's just the square of this, this group. I just write bar, not to distinguish these two groups, but uh, for example, elements of this group will be denoted with letters. So for example, this uh, is generated by S, S I, as uh, this will be generated by N lambda. Of course, that this is generated by SI bar. Uh, and uh, so, so this is this bar is just for about notation, not about uh, the group. Uh, well, so suppose you have a you have an element which is uh, a, a word uh, which is SI. Uh, well, the word in SI. Uh, maybe I should say uh, bum, 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 bum. how I will, well, there's some some details which I want to avoid actually, but maybe I should yeah. So uh, maybe maybe I should uh, should mention the following uh, statement. So suppose we have two two uh, elements. So you have u one and u two. Therefore, it corresponds to uh, the uh, diagram on the torus. So two collections. Of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, curves on the torus. Uh, and therefore, we can orient, well, uh, this collection of curves, we can orient in some way. So for example, for, for this uh, picture, there is a natural orientation in this sense. And uh, of course, we, have, uh, we can orient uh, one collection in one sense and another collection in another sense. So to orient them, them in opposite directions. And also we want to impose the condition that U uh, is a word, U is equal to SI1, et cetera, SIK times lambda to the K and U1. And U2 is SJ1, SJL, Lambda to the k, where k is the same, it's just a subgroup of this group, which really, well, for, for, for me, it's important to impose the, this condition. So it's a natural group. Well, you do not, it's not really square of the group, but a little with a little bit condition that the power of lambda should be the same in the relation to the size. This implies that the total collection, collection, of the curves represent zero in H2 of torus. H2 of S1 cross S1. 
So you have th this picture. I don't want to, to draw. Well, maybe I should to draw. Uh, well, I will draw an example uh, very very soon. So uh, sort of the curve curve represents. Uh, so this, well, it's more or less clear why it's the case because if you take the intersection index with uh, the, the some burden, for example, of this cycle, this gray cycle. Uh, if taking the section index with this cycle, then uh, you, the cycles which are oriented in one sense, which is given by U1, will give you uh, one, the number big N, the intersection index uh, 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 with the cycles given by U2 will give the same thing, uh, also big N, the difference is zero. So intersection index in this, with this cycle is zero. The same thing, uh, intersection of this cycle is actually don't, gives K, and uh, uh, well, since these two k's are the same, then the, well, this is a, the consequence of this statement. So these k's are the same. Uh, well, uh, implies that the total uh, is zero. And so what I uh, did before, so you have a collection of factors in Z2 that is the same. So uh, therefore, the classes of, therefore, the classes of curves of curves are sides of an unique convex polygon. So, uh, uh, well, this is a the uh, uh, the construction which. Uh, uh, which uh, constructs a polygon out of the world. So uh, one the main re important remark, which is, uh, it seems to me, uh, one of the main achievements of Mancharov and Kenyon, that uh, this integral system doesn't depend. The integral system does not depend on M. But only on only on uh, the uh, uh, only on the uh, polygon. You can obtain the same point. Well, what's uh, the uh, the polygon? Well, you get some polygon. If you have a polygon, then uh, actually the n is the Sides, the vertical dimension, well, the 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 side of this, uh, the height of this polygon, and of course, if you uh, make a transformation, so n is not invariant, under the action action of SO two. Uh, uh, to so to that on the polygons, so you can obtain really plenty of uh, one integrable system uh, in different possible ways. For example, maybe for those who are experienced with Soda system, sometimes they uh, they uh, use uh, the matrices of size n times n, sometimes they n Soda system, sometimes two two by two times two. There are plenty of them, so uh, it's. The gen uh, general statements about about this uh, uh, this construction. Another remark, which is also useful, is that uh, uh, the uh, the well, what I defined uh, is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the there was a this discrete dynamical system, which is given by this transformation. And this is just only one generator. And what I explained before, if you have a, a discrete uh, discrete transformation, then well, there are plenty of discrete uh, symmetries of a given integrable system. And actually, num number of it's the abelian group of the rank, which is equal to the number of vertices of the polygon minus three. So there are plenty of them. So the claim uh, will claim that uh, well, the action, the element. The action of the tau. Well, I'll I'll denote it by 
maybe it's not a very good idea to choose the star, but uh, well, ID uh, denoted by D. So the action of D also depends uh, on the representation is not invariant, also is not invariant. So therefore, uh, if you turn uh, your, your by SL2, you get different Ds and all these Ds commute and that get, gives you uh, the whole group uh, of, of discrete symmetries. And in general, uh, other Ds cannot be written in a such nice way that the decomposition of symmetries into a product of two. Uh, to make just a separate low triangular. So these are discrete systems which are not more, uh, well, more complicated. Than, sorry. Uh, well, now uh, I'll come back to, to uh, uh, well, I will do some example. Uh, maybe I should. Do, Well, if you have, uh, so how, how to do the, uh, well, I want to, from, from element Q, I want to construct explicitly uh, uh, the, the, well, uh, the, the diagram, which is diagram, uh, bipartite graph, And the parameterization coordinates. So uh, the idea is the following. So you have uh, just let's take the simplest possible word. So let's take n equals two. Uh, the group is SL2 hat. So two hat, and the, the word Q will be S zero, S one, S zero bar, S one bar, and the recipe to construct what I I'll uh, do I'll construct the well let's take maybe I should draw the torus as a square. Uh, well, a square maybe longer. And the idea is the following. So you take the uh, the so SO two corresponds to two points. And uh, well, I'll draw uh, by uh, something which corresponds to well, this is an element of well, I will draw them in red. The letters because everything on the picture which corresponds to to the second uh, will be red. So what is S zero? S zero is uh, well maybe uh, one moment I just want to reproduce uh, maybe maybe I should try this way. It's not it doesn't really matter, but S one uh, S zero S one is zero. So what is S1? S1 is just you take two curves which are interchange. And I can, well, since it's first generator, I can just draw the, uh, the red line between the two. So I uh, recall that the red, uh, actually the difference between red and blue are, um, well, it's not very essential. This is just the blue are oriented to the right and uh, uh, red oriented left. So we have the, this picture. This is this corresponds to the generator S1. Uh, this one. Then I have a zero. A zero is the same thing, but uh, well, we interchange behind the, the picture. So I can make them interchange on this red on this red line.
So I imagine that the top is glued to the bottom. So this is a, uh, the first two, two generators. Uh, and then I do the same if I can draw up to the end. And then I have S1. This is S1. And this is So this is a picture on the torus. This is S1, this is S0, uh, this is S1 bar, this is S0 bar. And I get a picture and uh, well, from the point of view of homology classes, you can see that for example, the, this curve goes once uh, to the right and once uh, to the bottom. So it, this, this curve corresponds to, to the homology class, which is equal uh, to one minus one. This corresponds to homology classes correspond to, to one, um, uh, to one, one. This corresponds to the homology class, uh, to homology class minus one, because this direction goes this way. So it's minus one, uh, minus one, and this will be, uh, the uh, this is minus one one. So we have four vectors, and it's exactly like it was the picture which I drew last time. So we have these four vectors, and they correspond to the uh, polygon, which is the standard square. Now the uh, uh, well, what why it's nice uh, this this representation because you can for free get uh, the corresponding uh, bipartite graph. Namely, to get the bipartite graph, you take just you have this this picture, you put the black vertices at ah uh, sorry. First of all, what you do you need to uh, to cover your picture in a. a alternative uh, 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 well chess board way so you draw some half of them gray and half of them uh, keep white so these are uh, you get your, your torus uh, covered and then you can do the following you, you put the uh, or black vertices at the, at the intersections. This, they are, well, they are never black. Uh, this time they are green, but well, whatever. Uh, you you take the, here are the white vertices and then connect them uh, according to just the ad natural adjacency. So this is the same thing here. Here we have, uh, it goes like that. Uh, and like that. Uh, here we have white. Hopefully, uh, I draw all the, the edges. So the claim, uh, the edges uh, well, the zigzags of the bipartite graph of the bipartite graph. Are exactly the uh, the desired uh, are the 
uh, the curves. So what we did, we uh, can, first of all, we constructed out of out of uh, out, we we did the other way around. So out we took the uh, we took the curves, we took the zigzags and reproduced uh, the graph uh, for for the zigzags. So uh, what I promised last time that, in particular, if you have a collection of curves, for example, you have a polygon, uh, then you uh, what what you can do. So you take can take polygon out of polygon you construct. Uh, the corresponding uh, you draw the diagram and you reconstruct the element of uh, of uh, so you you have the polar algorithm so you have a polygon then you construct out of that so you you choose the vertical direction so you choose the the edges which go right and choose the uh, edges which go right so the element of of w cross w then out of that you construct a bipartite graph. So for for any polygon you can you can really construct the graph which is which is uh, uh, given by the idea. So uh, the, well, the last five minutes I will try to to understand uh, to to explain that this is a also a, uh, something which allows me to. Uh, to give it coordinates, so to print out construction of coordinates of coordinates, and the coordinates are a little bit uh, a little bit complicated, uh, but but the idea is the following. So let's take so uh, the coordinates actually they are uh, uh, cor corresponding to faces. To faces of uh, the well, maybe I should white. Why? Why or gray? Uh, this map by picture gray faces. Well, uh, also maybe uh, maybe I should mention that zigzag are the curves, and the gray faces correspond to to just faces of the, the bipartite graph that I'm speaking about faces of of uh, bipart, uh, face, faces when need precise faces of what faces of bipartite graph is the same thing gray faces of my my uh, my picture so uh, or faces of bipartite graph so for every every gray face we kind of shape a, a code and how I, I can do that it's just this the more or less the same idea is that uh, the uh, so let's take some face and uh, associate to it. So if I take one face, we choose the face which corresponds to uh, to the uh, to some elements and take the coordinate to be equal to one. And uh, this well, what I have the well maybe I should well I I have not not much time but I'll try to find, figure out. So if you have a matrix A of lambda, the matrix A of lambda. Can be also uh, it's a sum of uh, a i lambda to the i, and out of that you can construct it's equal to that you can construct a periodic matrix. So this is a matrix block matrix, which has the form infinite matrix, and here we have a zero, a zero. A zero, etc. Here we have well, maybe I should write my mi minus lambda here. A one, uh, a minus one, etc. A minus one, a one, a minus two. So claim that. Uh, the it's, it's two ways to represent your fine group. So either you represent it as a as a, a polynomial with values in a matrix, or uh, or is matrix as values in polynomials, or is in some matrix which is infinite and which is invariant under the shift under uh, you can shift it by n and the matrix remains invariant. So uh, if you have finite matrix, then of course the natural uh, functions of this matrix are its minors. 
So you may take the minors of this matrix. So minors, minors of the matrix, we can see that the, well, semi-infinite minors of the matrix. of the matrix are just the, well, you take the determinant of, of submatrix. So the determinant of submatrix uh, uh, by, well, obtained by by taking two subsets of uh, uh, rows and columns, two subsets of, well, uh, of a subset, a subset X of columns, such that uh, X intersection with integers is finite. Uh, sorry, uh, X minus integers. Uh, natural numbers is finite. It's the same thing and the same for columns. So these are internet uh, determinants. Once again, they are not defined. Every concrete determinant is not defined, but the ratios, so determinants are not defined. But uh, the ratios are defined. Uh, well, C, C minus one. So it's the same wedge product which you which used uh, with Dima, and actually these are particular cases of top functions. So what one the reason why I wanted to to, uh, to introduce this this and how to uh, once again. I want to say that uh, for every every face, you can associate some set X. Namely, uh, for one face, you associate just N times N. And I mean, sorry, this N is the natural numbers. So there is a standard set N times N. Well, N comma N, so we have two subsets, N and N. N. Uh, every time you cross the red line, you add or, uh, one element of n or subtract one element of n, depending on one you where you go. Uh, well, you have here, uh, you, uh, you enumerate your one, two. Well, you imagine you, that you are a universal cover of, of the picture. So you have one, two, uh, one and two. So uh, then you go to the, to the universal cover. Uh, then you have one, two, three, four, etc. So this is uh, something you, you just subtract from. Uh, you well, you take the subset by passing from from uh, walking around this picture, and every time you cross the 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 curve, you either you remove the corresponding elements of n, or you add, depending on uh, if you go from right to left or left to right, and then you get a subset. And for every face of the, this picture, you get a subset. And you get the subordinates. Well, it's just vaguely. Well, you can associate some functions to every phase of that, and all this using the style function using well the, the equation of uh, which uh, well uh, the, the relation future relation which uh, uh, was explained by uh, by Dima. You just uh, can ex uh, explicitly write down the evolution of your size. So this was a, uh, well, I have no time to, to say that, but well, maybe I stop here. Thank you very much. So Valoda, thank you very much for your lecture course.
Are there questions or remarks? There seems to be no questions. Then thanks again, all of you. Thank you.